Previously on the complete timeline of Fallen of Albas, we learned about what the Despians can actually do, and boy, they are scary. We've seen the beginning of the Despian assault on the city of Dogmatica and the art of branded opening. We've seen Albas transforming into multiple dragon forms with Albion the branded dragon and of course Tamir Jade in the battle of the Ice Jades. We've met the members of the Sword Soul tribe and Ecclesia who finally got accepted into it. We've learned more about the sinister Aluber and his plans for the future. And of course, we've seen that one of our heroes, the Iris Sword Soul, flirtily, has been captured in the capital and is in imminent danger. There are 178 cards in the Fallen of Alba's lore. 178 cards that depict a part of the story, the characters involved, and allows to visually see what the world of Fallen of Albaz looks like. In this video series, I'm going to be going through the entire Fallen of Albaz lore and story card by card, showing you exactly how the cards look, how their effects affect the story, and eventually how we got to where we are in the story today. Chapter 4 is a pretty short one, but we are accompanied by Kit and Captain Sargas from the Spring Ants tribe, and we are headed to the Land of Iron. The Land of Iron is the land of the Disc Coliseum, which is a big coliseum where fighters fight for dominance. We are introduced to the members of the Therion, who are elite fighters in the ring, each one a different type. Therion Bull, Ain, Therion Reaper, Fume, Therion Duke, Yule, Therion Lily Boria, and of course, the reigning champion with the belt, Therion King, Regulus. Each one of them can target a Therion monster or another monster from their type in their graveyard, special summon themselves, and then equip that monster to them. Essentially, they are tagging out in the ring. Every time a Therion member has fallen, the next Therion in line can take over, acquire some of its powers, and enter the ring to fight the next contender. And this is exactly what the Therions do. They attach a fallen Therion member from the graveyard to themselves, and then they gain one of its powers. So for example, if another Therion attaches Therion King Regulus to itself, it will gain the effect where you can send a Therion monster card from your hand or face up field to negate a card effect, but also gain 700 attack points. So this archetype is just incredibly cool. And we also have Tribe Drive. Remember, we talked about Tribe Drive in the second chapter of the story, and this is a trap card, a normal trap card that is actually external to this story, but it does feature in the artwork Kit working on some secret components in the desert of Golganda. And it's also kind of tied with how the Therions work. If you have three or more different monster types on your field, you can choose three monsters from your deck with three different types from each other, but the same types as the monsters you control. Then your opponent randomly chooses one for you to either add them to the hand or special summon it, and you place the rest of the monsters at the bottom of the deck in any order. And now we're introduced to a new version of Kit. It's actually Spring Ants Kit. She was formerly, of course, a member of the Tri Brigade and had Tri Brigade related effect, but now Spring Ants Kit is actually a new supporter of Fallen of Albaz. If you have a fusion monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz as a material on your field or in your graveyard, you can special summon Kit for free. And if this card is normal special summoned, you can add to your hand one of your branded spells and traps that is currently banished in your deck or in your graveyard and then place a card from your hand to the bottom of the deck. So Kit, of course, is extremely resourceful and she can finally recur your spent branded spells and traps. So of course, we talked about the Disc Coliseum. This is the arena of the Therions and when activated, of course, you can add a Therion monster from deck to hand and check this cool battle effect out. Once per turn, if your monster would be destroyed by battle, you can send a Therion card or one endless engine Argero system from your deck to the graveyard instead. Once per turn, when a monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can target a Therion monster in the graveyard and add it to your hand. So essentially continuing the battle arena theme, every time a Therion falls, you get something back out of it. 
and with Therion Charge, you can send a Therion card, accept Therion Charge or Arturo System from your hand or face up spell and traps onto the graveyard and draw two cards. And now we need to talk about why Kit and Sargas are here. So there's obviously a huge ongoing war in the city of Dogmatica right now between the invading Despia forces and the Tri Brigade, who have now tried to fight them in their own capital. And Kit, being the weapon builder and tech mech of the Tri Brigade tribe, was sent to the Spring Ants tribe and eventually here to the Disc Coliseum to find and create the powers to fuel the endgame weapon for the Tri Brigades. We'll talk about that a little bit further down the line. And now we can see in these two trap cards, Therion Cross and Therion Stand Up, Sargas making its way through the gauntlet that is the Disc Coliseum, fighting each one of the Therions, eventually reaching the king himself, who's the reigning champion. And in Therion Stand Up, we can actually see Kit yelling at Sargas, stand up, dude, to make sure he doesn't lose the fight and that they get what they need. Eventually, we are learned of this engine system that is powering the Disc Coliseum, the endless engine Arduro system. And seeing that Therion King has now fallen, it sends a message to the skies to spawn down a few living forms of thunder. And in Sprite Starter, we can actually see the Arduro system deploying those spirits from the sky. Sprite Starter, of course, special summon one Sprite monster from the deck, but you lose life points equal to its original attack. And then you're locked into level, rank, or link twos. And sprites are just extremely iconic. Sprite Blue, Sprite Jet, Sprite Red, Karat, and Sprite Pixies. Make up the forms that have spawned from the skies to try and stop Kit and Sargas from taking the powers of the Disc Coliseum. In the Art of Gamma Burst, we can see the Arjuro system actually boosting the powers of those sprites. And of course, as portrayed by the effect, all of your level rank or link 2 monsters gained 1400 attack and defense. In a last ditch effort, we also have another Therion joining the mix, who's Therion Empress Lazia. And lastly, using Regulus's fallen body, the Arduro system creates Therion Irregular, which is Therion King's body combined with the Sprite Lightnings. We of course also have Sprite Elf, and finally, the big big boss of the sprites gigantic sprite fighting the battle but as we can see in sprite smashers irregular is going to charge at the gigantic sprite and eventually in sprite double cross we can actually see sargas irregular and gigantic sprite fighting and the double cross actually means that therion king regulus which is supposed to be on the sprite side has actually combined forces with the new champion sargas to take down the gigantic sprite and the end goal and the result of kit's hard work is actually sprite sprint we can see sprite sprint is such a weird character it's of course another link to from the sprite family that also has a pretty powerful effect of sending a level 2 monster from your deck to the graveyard not by coincidence tri brigade kit is also a level 2 but we can see Kit in the background feeling a bit anxious but also happy because her mission is complete. We can see Kit's makeshift coat and two canisters, one of blue sprite lightning and of course one with red, as these are the two sprite forces that have spawned from the sky. So essentially with sprite sprint and also with a hint to sprint the iron dash dragon, which is another fallen of Alba's fusion back from the days of Golgonda, we can see that Kit has eventually managed to capture the sprite powers she actually came to the Disc Coliseum for. And now with these thunder and lightning powers captured within sprite sprint, Kit and the new champion Sargas can finally return back and report back to the Tri Brigades saying, hey, we got what we needed and we can finally build our endgame weapon. And in the next chapter and the final chapter of the complete timeline of Fallen of Albaz, we learn about a sad truth when Ecclesia finally meets Iris, or rather, Fleur de Lis. We get a little bit of a backstory on Ecclesia's past, but we are also met with the forms of dragon kings from a distant kingdom, the Bestials. We learn of a new form taken on by a Luber, who's the Bestial Lubelion, and Adrian turning into a level 10 synchro 
and taking over the Ice Jade Kingdom now that her queen has fallen. And of course, finally, we're gonna meet the final boss in this story and see who ends up on top. Thank you so much for watching this chapter of the story of Fallen of Alba as the complete timeline. Make sure to stick around because the finale is going to be extremely exciting. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to catch the next chapter and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.